All right, Alan, welcome. Uh, happy to have you aboard here. Um, before we get started, just go ahead and introduce yourself, let people know who you are and the type of work that you're involved in. Sure. Um, thanks a lot for having me on. My name is Alan Delisle. Um, they call me the technical sales coordinator here at Phillips Precision. Uh, we're located in Boylston, Massachusetts. I'm, um, I call myself more, I'm a, I, start, I used to call myself a sales and marketing um, and branding consultant. Uh, now I call myself more of a humanization specialist. Thank to, uh, thanks to my use of video and the understanding that I've, I've grown over the last few years and using it. Um, we do a kind of a really niche thing over here where we sell inspection fixturing for CMM machines, vision systems, and things like that um, in the quality control and inspections process uh, deep in the manufacturing field. So um, everything that gets manufactured has to go through inspection. Otherwise, you'd be making bad parts and wouldn't even know it. And uh, so, you know, and with that, you have these great machines, but if you have a bare piece of granite to stick a part on and all you have is a machine to run, you need a way to be able to hold that part in place a certain direction over and over and over again. If it's a medical part, you got to do 100% inspection. You got 10,000 parts. You got to be able to have a really, really efficient way to get parts on and off that machine really quickly to make sure that they're all perfect. Um, so that's what we focus on here. That's what we specialize on here. So it's cool. That's what we do. Yeah. So, uh, you know, not many people in the manufacturing space are using video in their marketing. And not at all. So not at all. how did you kind of get turned on to using video in your business? Well, before I was here, I, well, I did sales m almost my whole life. I started off with a technical background, which is why I'm instilling machining in, in, in uh, the manufacturing. But I, uh, I got into doing sales and more marketing. And then I started working for myself. And I said, well, if I'm going to do this, I got to attract my own clients. I got to figure out how to market myself in order to teach people how to market. Right. So I started using more video and things like that. But it was um, not for any particular industry or any particular company. And um, then when I, I, I came on board here at Phillips, I said, you know, this is, it'd be a great way to get into doing video because it was like what you just said, nobody else is using video in manufacturing, in the manufacturing space. And um, no, since nobody else is really using video yet, it was a way for us to be able to stand out of the crowd and really, um, you know, not get buried in all the rest of the, uh, the rest of the, uh, the, the, the flooding of tooling sales companies and all these people that are just driving around and selling tools out of the trunk of their cars. Yeah. That's so cool. Uh, yeah. Earlier you referred yourself as a humanization expert, aficionado, specialist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Specialist. Uh, talk to me a little bit more about that. So I really, really, really understand the power of the human interaction. And, and I think that as a, cause I worked as a customer relations consultant for myself after working in sales and direct sales and talking to people on the phone and in person and coming up with very technical solutions within the automotive space, um, that I understand the power of looking someone in the eye and really taking them by the hand and showing them that you genuinely care about making their life better or genuinely care about them being successful in their own life. And, and I figured out what I'm passionate about and I figured out how to get really good at that. And it's something that I can see matters to you as well. Let me show you what I can show you. Let me show you what I know to help you formulate a plan to make yourself as successful as I am. And in doing that, um, it's tough to get those messages across with just a regular text email, especially on the regular basis. And um, you lose the context of body language. You lose the context of tone in your voice. You, how many times have you sent a text message to somebody you meant to maybe as a sarcastic joke, as a playful thing or whatever, and they took it a totally offensively. And now it all of a sudden it came and turned into an argument, or maybe you lost a client, or maybe you're now your friend is you and your friend are on the outs because of a comment that was made and taken out of context because it was through text. Well, with video, you know, colleagues, a specialty of mine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> out emails. <laughs> right, out yeah. Messages. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So if you do it with video, they can see, I was totally joking. They can hear it in your voice, you know, and, if you said it to them in person, it would have been funny, but since it was in text, it gets lost in, in, in context. And, uh, you know, just like in the Rehumanize Your Business book, they talk about how as a species, we go back, say, 150,000 years or potentially more, we don't know, but say 150,000 years, we've been communicating face to face, right? And then we started writing our walls 30,000 years ago or so. And then um, now only in the past 500 years or so have we been literate enough as a whole for reading and writing to be our communication style. So we got 150,000 years of verbal face-to-face -face versus 500 years of writing and writing. We're obviously better at verbal face-to-face. -face. 
you know, you can be an infant and understand a smile is a smile or a frown is a frown. You could be blinded and you could, or you could have 20, 20 vision and understand that a frown means you're happy and a yeah. smile means you're sad. It doesn't matter. It's a universal language. So the, the video is very powerful and I always understood that. So um, that's, that's kind of why I wanted to bring it into my space here, especially because we have the tooling and the solutions we come up with here at Philips. You can't really understand it if you don't see it. Yep. So I, I said, wouldn't it be cool to be able to put a video in an email because we have tons of contacts, tons of people we can reach out to that could be customers, but we have to get them to click something to go to our website to see this stuff. Well, what if we could send it to them so they could see it and make them click like, so they don't have to go to our website to understand it. And I said, there's gotta be something out there. It's like, like my, my first week working in this, in my position here at Phillips, I was, there's gotta be a way to get a video inside of an email somehow. I just started researching it and came across, I came across bomb bomb. And I said, this is pretty much exactly what I'm looking for. And then it turned into being way more than I even thought it was going to be. And now it's become really a staple in the way that I, the way that I do business. And it's, it's really uh, worked out really, really well for me. Yeah. That's so cool. So you talked about, you know, humanization. Uh, and when you're talking about that, are you talking about the humanization communication as a function of sales, a function of marketing, a function of customers, customer success, customer support? I mean, where do you see its role being strongest? It is. So humanization is, to me is pretty much your brand as a whole, which is your business as a whole, which is your business's personality as a whole should all be human. Because at the end of the day, people buy from people, people buy from stories, people buy from the people that they trust. And at the end of the day, people want to know that they're getting their information or they're buying something from an expert in the field so that they're not making an, an ill choice or an, an ill-informed choice. But in order for people to trust that you are that expert, they have to know that you genuinely care about them first. And in doing that, you do that by being vulnerable and showing them that you are also a human, just like they are also a human. And maybe you've got some setbacks in your life, just like they've had some setbacks in your life. And don't be afraid to be completely transparent with them. Because I think we're, especially in today's world where corporations have kind of overtook the previous generation for so, so long. And now you were seeing these big box stores crumbling and crashing because they didn't, they forgot that they were dealing with humans. You know, they, their customers became a number, just like their employees became a number. And they send out all these ads and everything. And now it feels like you're doing business with a corporation, not with a person trying to help you. And, and, and that's really uh, the, where I think the future of, of success is going to lie is people that have the ability to be able to do that. It does, no longer matters how much money you have to spend on, man, on marketing or on your advertising. It's how can you use the technology and the, the materials. Most of it's free and cheap anyway now anyways. How, how can you take these resources and create a whole different experience for somebody that, that, that they can't get anyplace else? And, uh, and, and I think with the power of video, it really sets us apart from everybody else that's not using video yet or don't understand that yet. So it's a perfect time to grab these things and run with them. Yeah. So in a, in a previous interview uh, with a guy named Jeremy Whitaker, uh, the, the, comp the topic came up of, he wanted to show up authentically as he was on video, but he felt like the rules of professionalism that he had to live up to almost didn't allow that. Right. Mm -hmm. So to him, it felt like there was a split between the professional me that the world wants to see and the real authentic me. Do you see there being a, a divide between what the world considers professionalism and authenticity? Do you see that there's not a divide? Are they in the same quadrant together? Talk to me about those two things. Um, so I think that if you are, if you're genuinely, an expert in what you do. It's, it's at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter too, too much as far as um, splitting up the professionalism versus the, the real you, because at the end of the day, the real you is you. Right. And, um, and I, and I think that we've almost kind of gone down this road for so long that this professional cookie cutter image is what people sh expect of everybody in a, in a, in a pro professional or a business role. But I think that if you come out and you break that cookie cutter or you break that mold and show more of yourself as a vulnerable person within this role, it becomes more of a, like the imperfect is what is actually perfect. Then I, I'd work with other people in my, in this field and, you know, and other colleagues that say that too. They're like, Oh no, no, you have to march out, you know, with the way we say this or with the way we say that. But I keep on saying that that's the way it always has been. 
but we have a new generation coming through that wants to see things in a different way. So show yourself, show your vulnerable self. You know, I'm not saying, you know, don't shower, don't brush your teeth, don't comb your hair, you know, don't dress professionally, but you don't have to worry about being a robot or being the, uh, the, the corporate, um, you know, what people imagine as the corporate hierarchy and, you know, anymore, you know, you can let people know that you are a human and that we are real and that we're on, you know, on just on a down to earth level, just like everybody else. <laughs> what, I, what I almost see happening around me is that everyone, or at least lots and lots of people, um, have this idea in their mind of what their professional self should be and how they should present themselves. It's an act, mm -hmm. it's a facade, it's a, a, a code of conduct we've all learned about how to behave. And we all feel like we have to be that us, we can't be the real us. We're all walking around mutually putting on this act for the benefit of one another, no one really enjoying it and no one actually caring themselves. They just think everyone else cares, so they exactly. do their part to yep. keep up the act. So when somebody can show up and show up a little bit more, right? And show up more authentically, more really, and you know, let that professional facade drop a little bit. Everyone else around them takes a sigh of relief of, oh, thank God, so I can drop my guard too? Oh, mm -hmm. good, right? Yeah. And I, I personally, I think on that, if it is truly a continuum of different ends of the spectrum, but maybe it's not, maybe that's the wrong way to look at it, but if it is, I'm definitely more on the authenticity side of it, where yeah. you have to hit the bare minimum of like, you know, being competency and putting in some effort, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, for this interview, I'm, I'm dressed nicely and I comb my hair this morning. Um, but truly, I think this conversation that you and I are having is the same conversation we would have if we were sitting on the couch drinking some beers, right? Absolutely. For Showing sure. up authentically. For sure. And I think that's what people like to see. And when they see someone else, especially in a video and an email, right, if you're using a product uh, that does that, when they see someone else showing up that authentically and that really, it just makes them relax and put their guard down, which mm -hmm. creates a much better bond than if you're both mutually, you know, keeping up an act for each other. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think that um, you... As a, and so as a salesman, and I used to hate calling myself a salesman before I understood what a salesman was, you know, say 20 years ago. And, uh, but now I'm a salesman because I love to help people and I'm not in sales for the sake of making the sale. I'm in the sales for the sake of making your life better or making you, you know, I, I try to put myself in the position of Yoda, you know, you know, here's your lightsaber. You can be the, you can be the, the Luke Skywalker and go off and be successful in your life with the tools that I can help you with, you know? I don't want to be the hero. I want you to be the hero, but I want to help you be the hero, right? But the second thing I was going to bring up too on that same topic is I know some people that are older that have been also in manufacturing or um, in tracking and tracing across all industries. And, and he's an older gentleman that is probably old enough to retire, but he still works because he loves it. And when I was explaining to him of using video in his emails, now he's the president, CEO, owner of this company. I tell him, yeah, when you get a new customer, send them a video. And say, how you doing? You know, my name is, uh, I can't, I don't want to say his name out loud. My name's John. And, uh, you know, I, I want to say thank you so much for the order. Thanks for calling us up. We're here to support you any way we can. I mean, this is what I do. And um, he, in his mind, he's thinking, well, I think that if the president of a company sent me a video, I might feel kind of skeptical about that. And I was like, why? Don't you think that people want to know that you are just a human? behind your company, you know, you know, but he has this image that as the president, he needs to have this, I'm professional, I'm up here kind of image. And if he was going to be there, he'd be having to wear his perfect suit and his cufflinks and his fancy gold watch. But I, 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 I need to, you know, I think that that's a stigma that we need to break in a lot of the, the companies that are, you know, run, being run by that old school mentality that, that, that this, you know, hierarchy within a company is the way things are continuing to, uh, to progress in the future because it's really not because the days of showing up, just doing your job and, you know, allowing that hierarchy or that oligarchy within the company reign are over and being able to show up and come together as a, a, a team and bring all of your talents together as a team, rather than this, again, this, you know, corporate hierarchy or this, you know, kingdom, if you will, um, it, it, people are, are latching onto that. Customers are latching onto those more. So, um, but you also have a better, um, a better culture within the um, within your company and you also can it, it makes it easier for listeners or a user base or a tribe to be able to latch onto that company because they're not latching onto you know this where they're the people up top are kind of hidden behind their keyboards and then the only yeah. people that they're seeing are the ones that they hire to put in place for that i think everybody in the company should be on video <laughs> yeah it's interesting i almost feel like we're in this this transition period where People are really starting to appreciate the real, the authentic, the genuine, the you know, lack of <clears throat> the facade. 
-hmm. But many of us, particularly older generations, but even, you know, younger folks um, have still grown up steeped in this culture of professionalism and, you know, this power structure and hierarchy. And you're right, the boss can't show his vulnerability and the president isn't a real person, right? He's this polished professional uh, image mm -hmm. he's got to keep up. So it's interesting. People really want the authentic, the real, but we've all kind of been trained to only show the professional, the facade, mm -hmm. the fake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting, right? What people want is not what people want to give. We're in this kind of transition period here. Right. Everyone wants the authenticity, but we've all been trained to, to show the professionalism. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and, and I think that's what really gives us an edge by using video opposed to people that have not, um, you know, seen the light, if you will. Um, so that's why in, in manufacturing, it's working out very well for us right now because we're the first ones to the, you know, we're the first ones there. Um, as, you know, as I start to work with more of my colleagues and people that I've, you know, I'm talking to, I'm pushing, you know, the idea of using video in them, in their lives, especially with like my distributors and stuff, because I know that if they can be more successful, they're obviously going to be more successful selling my products, which is then going to be sure. me, me more successful too. So I, I, when I'm working with my distributors, I'm not just sh talking to them about the products. I'm also trying to coach them about the marketing and the sales and the, uh, that I have um, the, the wisdom and the, the experience that I have um, picked up throughout my career and trying to spill that over to them to help them pick up those things and be, make themselves and make their own companies more successful. And we're in turn, it makes me more successful. Like I said, cool. um, but I think um, there, it will become a day when it will be washed up. It always happens. You know, it always is going to be, uh, the, you know, the new big, the new best big edgy thing is, is what becomes successful until everybody gets there. And then it no longer is just like in the stock market. As soon as like, everybody starts, you know, showing up and telling you what stock you should be buying into, it's probably time to start selling that stock because yeah. once everybody's in it, it's no longer, you know, it's no longer has its edge anymore. Um, it's no longer cutting edge or, or, or forward thinking. And um, it's, it's about ready to see its demise. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's very true. The only thing I wonder on that note too is, is will we ever get to that point with video, right? Because other marketing fads, other social media trends, everyone can jump on board, right? If somebody starts using, you know, filtered pictures on Instagram in a certain way, everybody can easily adopt that. Mm -hmm. But video, there's such an emotional barrier to being vulnerable and putting yourself out there on video. I do wonder how long it'll take to get to that point where it's, you know, more or less universal. So I don't think, I, don't, I really don't think it's going to be so long, to be honest with you, because mm -hmm. I think that the more, and that goes back to the systemic, the systemic use of computers and technology that, that the next generations are just using naturally. Eventually we're going to get to where, and even now you see like the next generation come in, they systemically know how to use a computer. I mean, I have a four-year-old at home that uses my Chromebook. She goes on it. She logs into it. She watches, picks out what show she wants on Netflix all by herself. She's four. You know, and yeah. it's going to get to the point where just by picking up your phone and, you know, having a video chat with your friends, it's very simple, very easy to do. You can then bring that into the professional world. It's very simple, very easy to do. It just hasn't been adopted or understood enough yet because I think it like, goes back to this, oh, we have your vulnerable side or your like everyday life side or you have your professional side and we think of using your video chat on your phone as your everyday vulnerable. This is like not my professional side. But eventually that's going to be all people know, you know, and you're going to get into that. It's just going to be the natural way that, that it works. People are just, so I, I don't think it's really going to be too far off, honestly. And I don't think that, do I see that being a bad thing? Absolutely not. I think it's going to be a better, much better way for people to communicate. I think we might see a little bit more peace and harmony in the, in the world again, because it'll be people will be more effective or more efficient at delivering their messages and not being, uh, it won't be quite as easy to to misconstrue information or, or through just the just text, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, the uh, <clears throat> you know the the company I'm currently working at, right? Bomb Bomb, Alan, you're a customer of that we've even mentioned in this interview here. That's of course their big vision and mission is to try to rehumanize the planet, rehumanize the way we communicate, mm -hmm. rehumanize business, and get back to more of a face to face relationship base. Even though we're in a digital world that keeps us yeah. face to face. So. Absolutely. I do have uh, some questions I want to ask you before we end here. So, sure. uh, you know, and in the pre-chat here, we talked about how as you got started in the world of video, you didn't feel a ton of negative emotions, negative self-talk. There wasn't a ton of barriers and self-consciousness that there is for a lot of people, 
right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, your background with music and stuff like that kind of help prepare you for, for being visible and being vulnerable like that. Mm -hmm. So what I'd love to do is ask you some questions about your thinking and the way you see things and what your self-talk sounds like, because your self-talk and your outlook is probably very different than a lot of people who are listening to this podcast, you know, watching the videos on YouTube. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so um, talk to me about the, uh, the appearance thing. Was there ever a time in your life, uh, whether it was when you're using video or heck, even when you're you know, uh, on stage as a musician, when you were really worried about your appearance and what people thought of the way you looked and any of that stuff? Well, actually, yes, there is an answer. That yes is the answer to that. And as much as I haven't, um, I haven't had a lot of struggles being comfortable on camera uh, or being shy or, or being on stage or anything, um, one thing definitely is, uh, like my weight. I've, I am, I'm, I'm a big dude. I have a belly. I'm, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so I, you know, on video, I have the ability to keep it shoulders up. It's all good. You know what I mean? Um, another thing too, is that in, in this, me being totally open about myself, I, I have something called bilateral glean syndrome. So my eyes are a little bit crooked. So if you look, I'm looking at directly at the camera, but I know that my nose is facing this way a little bit. And because of that, my hat is always crooked. So when I look in the camera and I'm starting to do this, I'm like, man, I look like a look like a dope. So I now I always am like, all right, interesting. Straighten my hat out, make sure that I'm looking good. And I know that now I know that I'm consciously looking my best. And it's not about trying to look my best, it's just about trying not to look like a dork. You know, things about uh, about <laughs> yourself you you don't like. What does your self-talk sound like around those things? Um honestly, it's I just I I know that I am I don't know. I don't, I don't, just don't think I think about it much. I just, I just know that I'm going to, I have this information I want to share with whoever I'm sending a video to or whatever I'm doing this video for and look at the camera, smile and say what I got to say. You know, I, I, I think that's what separates me from a lot of the people that do have a lot of that negative self-talk is I think that the positive self-talk that they're, and I think there really is not really any positive self-talk. And I think that's just like goes back to people that are truly happy. Don't look in the mirror and say, I'm happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. They just are, you know? And I, so I don't think there really is any positive self-talk. I think there is um, positive adjustment or critiquing of yourself to say, Hey, you know what? I, I think that I don't, I think I want to do that a little bit differently next time because I don't, I don't particularly like the way that that came across, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to go back and change it right then and there. Um, but it's always kind of looking at yourself from a third person. And um, another big thing too, is I noticed with my voice, a lot of people said, you have a great voice where I was doing a lot of more um, like what I have, I've run a podcast series here from uh, within the company here, as well as some, um, some on a, some personal business stuff that I work on too, some projects. And people always said, you have a great voice, you have a great voice to be on radio and everything. And I hear it and I'm like, wow, it doesn't sound like what I hear when I talk when that's true for everybody. Yeah. So I've figured out from hearing myself on camera or hearing myself on film for so long, how to adjust my voice a little bit to be able to make it better for, you know, for what I, you know, the way that I want people to hear it, you know, and uh, it's not about positive or negative self-talk. It's just about being able to look and adjust and see where you can improve yourself, you know, and that's where every, with, really with anything in life. But um, I, I think that's where the real difference is people have this negative self-talk, but it's all about being, um, being mindless, if you will. So they allow their mind to go, Oh, I don't look as good as that person. Or, Oh, I don't know. I feel like maybe I could stutter. This might not come out right. Or, Oh no, I just got tongue tied that time when I said that. And all oh, people are going to think that I'm a, people aren't going to accept me for me. People are going to think that I'm a loser because I'm not so polished as this, or, you know, I, I stumbled on my words or whatever the case may be. And it's only because they've never, uh, they've never actually watched themselves from the third per from, an, from the customer looking in or from their audience looking in and seeing Oh, okay. I'm doing that. I all it's going to be just a quick adjustment. No big deal. You know? And yeah. Uh, yeah, they, they, they get inside their heads too fast or too much. So if you found out somebody, um, hated one of your videos, uh, or if you saw negative comments on one of your YouTube videos or something like that, how would that affect your view of yourself? I, I think it really depends on what the comments were. Um, if it was, if it was something about the substance of the video, then okay, you know, let's have a conversation. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe what I said was incorrect. Maybe you have a different opinion. By all means, let's have this conversation. If it was, you know, about, hey, look at that, you know, that fatso on, on camera, I'd be like, well, yeah, that's me. I'm fat. What can I say about it? You know what I mean? Um, I don't, I think it's all kind of comes down to like a self esteem type of thing, too. And yeah. there's always going to be somebody out there, especially on social media, that is always going to find something that they can latch on to 
and try to rip the shingles off the roof. You know, there's always yeah. going to be a way somebody out there. And we see that all the time. We have a lot of, um, in, in, so in manufacturing, especially in quality and everything, where we're doing dealing with a lot of really technical minded people, a lot of engineers that we do business with and everything. Anytime I make a video, anytime we put something out there, say we call something a, a like a screw instead of a button head screw, you know what I mean? And they, yeah. there's always someone that nitpicks into that and will always try to drive home that and try to discredit you. And you have to understand that there's always going to be haters out there. Yeah. You know? So, well, it's interesting because what I was picking up on as you're talking, and it seems like uh, it seems like your sense of self, sense of self worth, sense of your value, security, and who you are is completely independent from the videos you're taking, the response the videos get, the reaction the videos get, comments. Now, mm -hmm. what that allows you to do is first off take that step forward to begin with. A lot of people can't even take that initial step because mm -hmm. their sense of self is is kind of on the line. But the other thing you mentioned there is that you're able to take that feedback, both feedback you get from other people, but also feedback you just notice as you're watching your videos and actually be open to it, see it, hear it, feel it, and adjust according to it. I think a Absolutely. lot of people are just so terrified to hear the feedback, they just run away from the feedback and avoid it, right? They, they mm -hmm. don't rewatch their videos to try to get better. They, uh, you know, they, even when they do hear negative feedback, they almost have this wall put up, but they can't accept it and they can't uh, take it for what it is. So mm -hmm. I think your rock solid sense of self helped you step forward, but also has helped you be standing in a position of strength so that you can actually honestly look at your work, find where it's wrong, not be threatened by where it's wrong and make mm -hmm. the necessary adjustments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, isn't that the, isn't that the best, the only way to get better? <laughs> you know, is, <laughs> yes, right? But a lot yeah. of people don't have that rock solid sense of self. Right. They don't have that. It becomes very difficult to take the first step, but it also becomes difficult to, to take honest feedback and accept feedback Absolutely. and adjust accordingly because every bit of feedback feels like it's a threat to you, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think people do feel that way for sure. And um, I have some new, some new folks here that I'm trying to get to use video a bit more. And the way I'm breaking the ice with them is I'm getting them to record a few evergreen videos rather than, you know, maybe they don't have the confidence to get up and do one every single time. Yeah. But let's make something that sounds a bit personal that you can send out and that's more universal or general speaking. And you can put more of the details in the email and then you can just have your, your video go out to the same one to everybody. As long as you're not sending it to the same customer over and over and over again, you know, perfect and it's, it's a great, great way to get them to break into that. And the way that I get them to, um, to break into that is by number one, making them look at themselves and say, but they call me and say, Oh, I'm done. You want to come look at the video? And say, sure, you like it? Well, I, I don't know, I guess. It's like, well, well, you watch it, and if you like it, then come get me, and I'll come and look at it. Yeah, You know what I mean? Because a lot of times, then we go look at it, and I'm like, I don't know. And they're like, well, what do you think? It's like, I don't know. I think I look like a robot. You watch it, you're like, well, that's because you do look like a robot. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> So you can see that for yourself. So if you're not happy with that, change it so that it is the way that makes you happy. And then call me, and I'll come watch it, and we can – we can watch it together. And at that point I say, this is awesome. It's perfect. This is exactly what we need because you see how you want to be portrayed as. So you make yourself be portrayed as that. And if you do it in the first time and it's not the way you want to be portrayed as, okay, that's not how I want to be portrayed. Let me do it again to a way that I do want to be portrayed. And, uh, you know, and that's, that's really the kind of the power behind it is forcing them to just do it. You know, you just have to get into it and do it just like anything else. Um, but I, I think I remember I mentioned at the beginning too, I tell them to, when they're doing their first couple videos, treat it as a hands-free voicemail with a smile. That's the way, that's kind of the way I bring newbies in. I was like, if you were just like, you were going to call someone and say, Hey, what's going on? This is Alan over here. I just wanted to call you back and let you know that your order has shipped and that it is on its way. And I hope that you have a great one. And thank you so much for joining the tribe. If you need anything, give me a shout. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Click. Same thing. Hey, what's up? This is Alan over here at Phillips. I just wanted yeah. to let you know that your product ship, same thing, but you're not holding a phone to your head. You're looking at a camera instead. Yeah. So same thing. And, uh, well, I like that, that exercise of having them critique themselves before you come in to critique them. It almost takes the mindset out of what will other people think of me and puts yeah. them in the mindset of, is this in alignment with who I am? Is this Absolutely. In my value? That's exactly right. I've actually said that to them in, in, in conversation. I was like, I want you to see, is this who I want to be? You know what I mean? It, it, like what you said, it puts you in alignment with who I am. And am I portraying myself the way that I want the world to see me? And if not, how can I fix it? <laughs> you know, if, if not, how do I make it so that they do? And a lot of people, I think of our time looking at themselves and that might go back to, you know, me, maybe me and being so solid in, in my own personality anyways. 
a lot of people, um, they talk to talk. They know what they know what a solid person looks like. They know what a real successful solid person looks like. But when it comes to doing it themselves, it becomes like a different. Now we're in a different ball game. Now it requires work. Now it requires emotional labor that I have to now think of myself and maybe think about things that could potentially hurt my own feelings. Yeah. And once people can, I don't know if we can swear on this, but once people can get over their own bullshit yeah, is when they really can start to leave it behind and then continue to go forward and say, all that, that was a bunch of crap that I was trying to lie to myself about. Yeah, That's gone. Let's be truthful with myself. And you just continue to move on and people see that you are being truthful with yourself and therefore you can't help but be truthful with them. And, uh, and they see the vulnerability and then they latch on to whatever resonates within them. And honestly, I had to tell people if everything if somebody does not latch on to you or latch on to what you're saying, that's okay. Not everybody's story, not everybody's personality, not everybody's brand, personal brand has to fit with everybody's, you know, everybody else's uh, cookie cutter or everybody else's story of themselves. For sure. Yeah. That's so cool. All right. <laughs> well, one last thing I want to touch on. Um, you mentioned it really early on and I think it's pretty profound. I've actually heard um, one, of, uh, one of my friends that I work with in this space, Alicia Archer, she talks about how if you're having a hard time with video, one of the first steps you can take is to focus on the recipient, focus on the value you're providing to the recipient, focus on how you're helping them. And when your focus turns towards them and the way you can help them and what they need and you providing what they need, it's really hard to be in that selfless serving place and simultaneously be worried about the way you look and your hair and your makeup and your voice and your weight and your, mm -hmm. you know, all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned in the beginning that seemed like it was kind of on that note. So have you found kind of the same thing to be true for you that when you're doing these videos, you are very focused on the recipient rather than focused on yourself? Is that fair to say? Absolutely. And I think being focused on the recipient is from a business aspect, your, the point of you being there is to help people be better and help the world, right? Help your customers. And if you're not, in the business of, of helping people or in the mindset of helping other people, then your business is going to fail. I mean, that's just the way it is. You're in the business of helping other businesses, helping other people be the, the heroes in their life. Like we discussed earlier. And when you are using video as a tool to be able to provide that service that you provide or to be able to provide that help that you provide, it no longer becomes a, it no longer becomes the feeling of, oh, I'm making a video for the fun of making a video. No, I'm making a video for the tool to go deliver this message to you. I don't care what is behind me or anything. I'm making it, I'm just using this as a way to be able to deliver my, you know, my, my, the value that I have for you to, to deliver it to you in a more, um, more uh, efficient or efficient way or more um, expected way, I should say. Um, everybody can call you on the phone or, or send you an email and everything. But um, when you can really use a video that, you can you understand and totally understand the, why technical knowledge is much easier to be portrayed on a video why emotional feeling is much more easy to be portrayed on a video um why would you want to try to reach out to them any other way once you know that this exists you know what i, you know what I mean it's like saying well i know that that you know like in our situation i know that that videos exist i know that they do but i would r much rather just run, just send a fax you know what i mean like yeah, right you know what I mean? It's like, you know, but people have this, oh, I don't know if I can send a video. Like, well, why not? You hit the record button, you video what you got to say and send it. It's not rocket science. And if you think about it too much, it becomes more than what it is. And it's nothing more than just another delivery tool. Cool. You know, but well, uh, I guess that's <laughs> it for now. We're running up on time here. So, uh, Alan, I'm sure a lot of people here in this interview are going to want to connect with you. And to people watching and listening, I'll tell you, you know, if you're in the manufacturing space, you'll certainly want to learn about Alan and his company's product. But even if you're just in the world of sales, marketing, leadership, you just want to connect with Alan just because he's a cool dude. Um, and you'll want to know. Yeah, him. I, I love marketing. So I work here, but I do this because I love it regardless. Absolutely. For sure. For sure. Yeah. So how can people uh, find you and get in contact with you, Alan? Uh, so you can find me on LinkedIn, Alan Delisle on LinkedIn. I have up there, you'll see me as a... Uh, humanization specialist, technical sales coordinator, you'll, you'll find me. And uh, LinkedIn's a good way. Facebook, I'm also on Facebook. Um, I'm also on Instagram. I, I'm, I call myself that weirdo with a beardo on Instagram. So if you want to check me out there, um, and if you want to just shoot me an email anytime, you can reach me at adelisle at phillipsprecision.com, phillips-precision.com, sorry. Let me say that again, adelisle at phillips-precision.com. There we and, go. Uh, but yeah, you, can, uh, you guys can reach out to me any way that you'd like, and uh, 
check out my website too. We have uh, philipsprecision.com or inspectionarsenal.com. You can uh, see a whole host of uh, videos of everything that we do here. And you can also check out our podcast at philipsprecision.com as well. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time, man. No problem. Thanks a lot for having me on. I really appreciate all you do.